Welcome to Bethel Brothers Hot Rod Projects and paint's all done, peeled off all the stuff off the windows. Uh, it's ready to start polishing some stuff. It's actually kind of late in the day. I had to go uh, to a class to get recertified for my forklift stuff. It's supposed to be a two-day course. I pass that crap in 30 minutes. Oh yeah. Tell me I can't do something. Try to hold me back. Uh-uh. I'm coming on stronger. I'm going to blow right past you. So today... We're going to polish some chrome junk, some of this stuff, you know, we'll go over some tips and tricks, I'll show you what I know, maybe it'll help ya, we'll see, we'll check it out, together, all of us, so stick around, stay tuned. This paint turned out really, really nice, man, we'll go over here where the reflection shows, uh, comparatively speaking to the previous days, this one's a little bit better. That 600 grit really does the job. There's a couple spots where I got some runs from the paint sagging, but uh, considering how cold it's been, I'm surprised there wasn't more. But uh, other than that, it looks it looks pretty good all over. Do you know what I mean? Even up here, where all the dusties and the fuzzies were, got rid of all that junk. It's squeaky smooth. I can't make it squeak now because I said it, but there it goes. That's how smooth it is. So I got to do the door handles, the mirror over there, and then these shark fin things that I had to cover up these stupid freaking post holes that were on there. Since this used to be a long bed, there isn't any on there because they chopped them off. The previous owner, that's who I'm saying is they. So, yeah. There it is. There it is. There's some shiny. So anyway, I'm going to come over here to the old polishing wheel do some work on this thing. We'll see how it goes. Okay, people. Polisher of Doom. Couple different polishing wheels. See how there's a space? I just put two of them together. Normally, they, they're they pretty skinny and defeats purpose, so I use two at a time. They have different kind of polishing compounds you can put onto these. Uh, there's a polishing grade, a shining grade, a mirror grade, blah, blah, blah. They come in a long tube. I happen to be out of those, so I'm going to be using Sex Wax. It's actually for a surfboard, and it works just as good. There's less abrasives, but this thing's kind of, you'll see. I'll show you the end result. Anyway, there's some other things you can also use. SOS pad. I'll be going over those, and even these green 3M Duma bobbers. Uh, don't use the red ones if you want to polish stuff. It'll just make a matte finish and it'll piss you off. So I'm not going to recommend using those. Another thing you're going to need is some gloves. Because whatever you're polishing, like say these shark fin things, da 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 da, it's going to get hot. Hot like the sun. Okay, so bare handing this and doing it, you're going to get burnt. Use some gloves. Also wear some glasses because this is going to spit stuff out. It's going to spit it all over the table. It's going to spit it on the wall. It's going to spit it in your face. So you got to be careful. And never, while it's running, do you put it on the top because it'll throw it out of your hand or kick it into your face and it'll cut you and stab you and kill you. You always want to go underneath and watch when you go like to the edges. When you go to the edges, it'll tend to want to skip off and wham and undo all your work. Nice, steady, and you have to be wary of where it's at. Sometimes when I want to get close to the edge, I'll take a, like a piece of plywood or something and put underneath it so I can go further out on the edge without it skipping off. And that's a good tip and trick. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is instead of running the camera and stuff, I'm just going to go over them and I'll show you some comparative deals since there's more than one. But this is what it looks like now, pretty much. And after I do one, I'll come back and I'll show you and talk about the steps I used. Okay, people. So it took about five, ten minutes. Did it up. Here's the one that I didn't do. There's the one that I did do. See the camera? Don't see the camera. See the camera? Don't see the camera. Well, you can kind of see it, but it gives you an idea. Yeah? And though it's, it would be better if I had the right compound, but the sex wax is working, baby! And if you have to get, like, some of this paint off... You can use uh, the SOS pad and lightly scratch it, but because this is aluminum, I don't recommend it. Just leave the paint on. It'll add to the grit on the uh, 
Wheel of Doom. Um, I use the SOS on like the harder stuff that's got the, like on bumpers or on like the door handles I use it where you can't get it in it because you do not want to bind up on this. Man, this thing is strong enough it'll rip your thumb off or fling something through the wall. You got to be careful doing it. You have to pay attention when you're using a power tool like this or you will regret it. Not even lying. So I'm going to keep polishing this junk. Got this to do to door handles and the antenna. Yay. So it's going to take a little while. Here's another comparison for you. The done one, the not done one. Uh, you can see by this one there's shine all through it. Yeah. Oh, camera, you can focus better than that. This one, not so much. There's some junk on it. You just got to be careful when that uh, polisher, if you get it at the wrong angle, it'll start hopping, and that's right before disaster. So you never, like, say it's... I'll come over here and show you. Uh, you're running it down here. Don't go past halfway. And by that, I mean here's halfway. That's too far. If you hit right here, it tends to want to boom, suck it through. So never go too close to the outside edge that you're doing, especially if there's something like this. It'll grab a hold of it and pull you through it. So be careful, okay? I can't stress that enough, especially using these. I've been tangled up in one of these before, and watch your shirt. It'll suck the shirt right out of you and pull you right into it. So just be careful. And since this is metal, and you're polishing metal, if you get too close to this, the friction will shoot out a very high charge spark. So that's something else to keep in mind. Hey, you'll feel it. Clear down to your toes, dude, let me tell you. <laughs> okay, dog people. Parts are back on, all shined up. Got these on, they're looking pretty cool. That one's looking all right. Even polished up the old antenna of doom. So that's about it. The only thing I have left to do is uh, these back brakes and maybe another header for this one. I think that's why it's backfiring a little bit is because a couple of the tubes are too short. That's only 89 bucks. But I was looking in this here drive magazine with some street machines. It's got a bunch of parts. I saw it at SoCal Speed Shop owned by Pete Champoris. This dude... Jimmy Shine also works there. You guys ought to do a Google search on him if you don't know who he is. But they sell these drum setups that are straight bolt-ons, but they have modern parts in them. But they want $1,700 to $1,900 just for two. A little expensive, Mr. Pete. Or, this is what I'm thinking, is these uh, disc brake setups. This one, the pair is a thou or the whole kit's a thousand bucks for front and back, and you get all that cool stuff with it. And this one's fourteen hundred bucks. Hmm, which one? Hmm, I'm thinking this one. Anyway, once that's done, that's all that there's left, and I can enjoy this pig. All right, people, it's pretty much all the time I have for today. Kind of tired. I was up late sweating about the test, but scored like ninety nine percent on the written, and then a hundred percent on the hazardous OSHA stuff and then blew through the forklift junk so doing a two-day test in 30 minutes and acing it like that psh, not sweating it other than that it's time for some dinner or something hope you found this episode useful like helping you people out give you a step up man I, I took a junkie truck and now it's worth bank <laughs> Not in this economy, but if we ever get out of this, man, that's a down payment on a house, babies. <laughs> so, that's it for now, people. Thanks for tuning in and watching Bethel Brothers Hot Rod. Peace out, babies. Don't worry. You can do it. Trust in yourself. Trust your gut. Ain't gonna lie to you. You can do it. I believe in you.